Hello everyone, today we are going to be planting these atomic purple gumfrina along the border that's right behind me. I started these gumfrina from seed about a couple months ago or a month ago or so. I did start a different set of these earlier in the spring, but unfortunately they did not make it. Something happened to them and I'm not sure exactly what. They all died so I had to replant the whole tray again. And I let these harden off in the rain for two days. I left them out in the rain for two days and uh, the third day the water were exposed to the sun and they were in a little bit of shade as well. So uh, now they are ready and hardened and ready to be planted in the ground and uh, this is their fourth day outside. So let's go ahead and get these gumfrina planted in the ground. And just one quick note about this. So I do have to mow the lawn. Our lawnmower was broken and my husband finally fixed it so I will be coming out later today and mowing this lawn because it definitely needs to be mowed it looks like a jungle out here and I do love though the Lady Anne's Lace in here I also came out this morning and I put irrigation in here and I put half gallon per hour emitters about one foot apart from each other in the area where I'm going to be planting the gumfrina. I also put some emitters on some of my perennials and some of the annuals. I ran out of emitters. I still have some right now. I found some so I can come out here later today and put the rest of the emitters in here. But for now, let's go ahead and get these gumfrina planted along this entire border or as many as we can plant from this tray over here. I also have some plant tone and my hori hori knife uh, that I'm going to be using to dig the, hole, the holes for the gumfrina. They're all in the ground. I want to turn on the irrigation system to see if they're going to be receiving the water that they need and just to make sure that there aren't any leaks or anything like that. The ones that are on this side are super tiny. I don't know if these will make it. We'll see. I had to put in some more drip emitters over here because when I was uh, putting this irrigation system over here, I stopped around there because I wanted to make sure that the perennials had drip on them so I still have some more of the half gallon drip emitters so I will be coming back later and putting it on some of these annuals over here we have also some basil over here I do want to put it on this because I want to make sure that this basil basil grows big now we don't have a lot of time left of course uh, before the frost comes but who knows the frost might comes in late might come in late October so these hopefully will grow and bloom and do all the things that I want them to do. I hope so. I don't know, but that's what I'm hoping, hoping so. So let's go ahead, turn on the water and see if this drip irrigation is working over here or if I need to fix something. I don't know if I mentioned that we are in early to mid August right now. So I think it's August 12th, I think. So they still have some time. So. Anyways, let's go ahead and turn on that drip irrigation.
There we go, they are working. Yay! Oh, this is so awesome. I am so happy with this. Look at them. They're all working. Oh, can you hear the sound? Can you hear it? Oh yeah. Everything is gonna get water now. This is music to my ears. Just wanna make sure there aren't any leaks anywhere. Looking good. Okay. Looking really good. That's awesome. I do have to put a drip emitter over here for this lavender because, oops, oh, I, I totally broke this salvia. I don't even know if it's going to make it or not. These are so puny because they're not receiving any water, so hopefully they'll make it. We'll see. Okay, so I have a few more drip emitters to add in this area, and then I'll be covering it with mulch. And it will be all done, with exception to that area over there. I need to clean all the... I need to first move the irises out of there. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be putting them. But I'll probably push them to this area over here, I think. And that whole area needs to have an overall... Overhaul? Overhaul? Is that how you say it? <laughs> Anyways. So this way I can spray all of the lilies of the valley over there. And it's just sh such a shame that the deer are eating this because I love, love the sweet potato vine. Especially, this is actually an edible sweet potato vine that I planted in here. So I will have to dig these out later on in the fall. But they also bloom these beautiful purple blooms and they open up in the morning. Now they're closing up. And I love the foliage also. They are so beautiful, but I have to spray the foliage so that the deer would leave them away. Also, if this one over here was doing good, this would be so beautiful. So I will have to put a drip, drip emitter for this one as well. But it looks like, I think it's going to be receiving water anyways from this drip emitter over here because I don't want to drown the lavender. And this will rot also if it receives too much water. So I think it, it should be okay. This is enough water in here. So right now, let's go ahead, grab a basket, and harvest all of this chamomile over here. That's a lot of chamomile. <laughs> I am super happy with the harvest over here and I will definitely plant this again. This was the most relaxing experience ever. The smell of the chamomile is just intoxicating as I'm working with it. it 
its fragrance is just wafting into the air and it's just so relaxing and I love it. So I love having a lavender chamomile tea right before bed and having it grown at home and in an organic manner is really important for me because when I do purchase tea, I don't know where it's coming from. And I'm hoping also that this chamomile has a higher quality than the chamomile that I purchased from the store, uh, meaning that I'm harvesting it maybe earlier, has, it has more fragrance. Um, also, of course, the fact that I'm growing it organically also has to do a lot with that but uh, also the variety of the chamomile has to do with that. I think this is the German chamomile that I started in here. I started that from seed earlier this season, in the spring, early spring, and then I planted it in here on a rainy day and uh, never received any water after that. It was surviving on its own. So I'm just super, super happy with the results. All this lavender that's here behind me is going to go away but I'm going to leave it here for this season. I haven't harvested anything from it because I just wanted the blooms to be in here. I, these were in the place where I planted all the gumfrina. And I'm going to be changing that area next year. I'm not gonna to touch it this year. Um, maybe I might do one thing this season. If I do it, I'll take you along with me. But I will be planting seeds in the late winter and starting some lavender that is, I think, more hardy to our area. And I'm going to be planting a border right along this area, uh, close to the driveway. And that might not be the best thing, but I think it would look beautiful. If it does succeed, I would be super happy. The reason why I'm thinking it might not be the best thing is because all the snow is going to get thrown on it. But that might be a good thing as well. It might protect it in the winter because the snow will act as a as an insulator for the lavender. Because when we do get these really low temperatures in the winter, it can take some of our lavender out. Like last year, we got a minus 20 Fahrenheit that was um, a record cold for us. And um, I think it might have gotten colder over here because we do live in a microclimate and our, around our house tends to get colder than some of the other areas around us. So I think that caused a lot of my lavender to die off and I have it right over the hill, uh, but unfortunately I did still lose some. So I will see how it works. I'm gonna plant it over here. I will monitor it with the water and all that because we have been having some dry spells in the summer and also in the spring and I'm noticing that the lavender needs more water and if we were just having rain constantly that is a completely different thing because the lavender would be receiving the rain from uh, the water from the rain now it has been raining uh, lately so that's a good thing the lavender has been getting watered and a lot of these plants all of these plants have been getting water from the rain but then we have these just fluke temperatures that come randomly. We have random heat waves. It gets into the upper 80s and 90s and the soil just dries out. We don't have any rain. So during those days, these plants need a lot of water and I can't just be grabbing the hose and watering everything by hand. That would take forever. I want to make our gardens, all the areas as mainstream as possible. I just want them to be as hands-off as possible. Of course I'll still have to come here, deadhead, weed, you know, all that stuff, fertilize, but I don't want to be here watering all the time. And as I said, I haven't watered this bed once this season. So that gives you a clue kind of <laughs> how life goes here. So I don't have that time. Uh, so I do want to apologize for the lawn behind me. I'm sorry. I do like our lawn to be clean and, and mown, but uh, our lawnmower has been broken. Every time we ride it, the blades get loose and they break. And I think my, my husband keeps replacing them and keeps repla replacing the piece that connects the blades into the lawnmower. And it just keeps breaking because we have so many rocks and it doesn't go high enough to skip those rocks.
so sometimes we accidentally go over a rock or a root, you know, and that just breaks it and he doesn't have all the time in the world to just fix the lawnmower because he's working. Uh, but I'm thankful that it's done today and I can go ahead and mow some of this lawn. If not, I won't be able to mow all of it, but at least I want to mow around the edges over here uh, to just clean up around the beds so that it will look a little bit nice for when we're coming into the driveway. Also, there's tons of grass that just grew everywhere because we did receive quite a bit of rain non-stop for like two or three weeks. Um, the past month so all the grass and all the gravel and everywhere just grew like crazy all the weeds are insane now so I have to work one bed at a time and one area at a time and just clean up and spray and do all the things because uh, this property needs a lot of maintenance and the weather wasn't allowing me to and some other things so I am super happy again with the harvest of this lavender. I'm going to be freeze drying it, lavender, sorry, with this, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> chamomile. And I'm going to be freeze drying it and uh, this way I can store it throughout the winter. I will be harvesting some more as these produce continue to produce. I'll come out here and harvest some more and I'll store them for the winter for some herbal late night tea or whatever whenever how or however I feel like having it and hopefully in the future I'll have my hedge of lavender so that I can have my lavender chamomile tea homegrown and all that so I want to thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you are having a wonderful day and I hope that you will you can get out there get in your garden plant something make this world a little a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more enjoyable thanks again for watching if you are new here don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so that you can receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos and if you like this video go ahead and click click that like button so that more people can see it on YouTube and I will be leaving a video for you guys right here so that you can go ahead and enjoy it until next time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again. Bye!